Today, we can arrange travel anywhere around the world with a few clicks of a mouse. But in 1859, the journey for two sisters traveling from their homes in Scotland along the Red River to the Canadian frontier was fraught with uncertainty and historic importance. Traditionally, the highest form of painting is the history painting, like uh, Jacques-Louis David painted the Napoleonic era, the, the Roman Empire. We here in the Red River Valley, we have a, an epic history of our own too, we just don't usually brag about it. This painting is the, a collaboration between two of the best local historians in Red River Valley history, Orabel Thortvet and Fargo Forum newspaper man Roy Johnson. The two of them did mountains of research on this story and, and on Fort Abercrombie. I think there's 40 pages of research devoted to Fort Abercrombie and Orabel Thorfett's uh, notebooks that we have at the museum here. And both of them used every source they could find about Fort Abercrombie to make this the most accurate painting. This is one of our best local history stories from, from really the founding of settlement in the Red River Valley. It's when the, sta the first stagecoach in 1859 comes to meet the first steamboat on the Red River. This was what was go finally going to link St. Paul with Fort Gary, today the, what we call Winnipeg. The two women getting off the stagecoach are Eleonora and Christina Sterling, who were two sisters from Scotland on their way to a trading post deep in the Canadian wilderness, uh, Fort Chippewyan on Lake Athabasca in Northeast Alberta, because Eleonora was going to meet her fiance there and get married. So they're on their way from Scotland. They travel the ocean and then they take the first stagecoach to the Red River. And then when they get there, they're supposed to meet the first steamboat. But and the steamboat's there, but the owner of the steamboat, Anson Northrup, he says, if you want to run the steamboat, you're going to have to buy her. Well, they weren't prepared for that, so they had to build a raft. And they spent the next 22 days taking a raft down the Red River, so going north to what's today Winnipeg. And then once they're in Winnipeg, they sail another 300 miles to the tip of Lake Winnipeg, and then they spent take the last 800 miles in a birch bark canoe. So altogether, it was a 6,000 mile journey for love. Another one of the characters in this painting is in the lower left-hand corner, the, the, the man sitting on a bench with a book in his hand. That's George Northrup, who is one of our fascinating, interesting, kind of swashbuckling characters of the, of the early Red River frontier days. Once the steamboat refuses them service, he's the guy that agrees to, to guide the sisters on the raft those 22 days up to Fort Gary. His friend Adam Stein said, he could talk Greek and Latin as fast as he could talk English, and he learned the, to talk the Sioux language well. So he was one of these kind of like a, a learned scout. And so that's why Orabel paints him with a book in his hand. Every detail of this, of this painting was painstakingly researched. The original buildings don't exist anymore, but the background of this painting, Orabel used a sketch by Manton Marble, who was a Harper's Monthly Magazine reporter who visited the Red River Valley in 1859 and wrote a story about it. The scene is his sketch. Roy Johnson and Orabel Thortvet, they communicated with each other back and forth. We have letters where they're saying maybe the Minnesota Stage Company stagecoach, the color should be a little bit more orange or something for it to be appropriate for this particular year. Doing a history painting of an important event in Red River Valley history, there's not a whole lot of those. These two people studied this story uh, maybe more than anybody else, and this is their collaboration. Prairie Mosaic is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4, 2008 the North Dakota Council on the Arts, and by the members of Prairie Public.